we have um, mainly uh, we have in a certain temperature range the existence of the order parameter, which is a general property, and uh, this order parameter uh, changes with the temperature. We have step like change. This is the first order phase transition, and the second order phase transition <coughs> continuously. All these things are very well known for you, even in the Russian Federation, because this is related to the early work of Landau and his famous colleagues. And I do not touch this proof, but I should mention the main contribution in this field was coming from Soviet Union already in the 30s. You know the story and you know also the famous person, including also Professor Ginsburg, uh, who got the Nobel Prize. So we have um, a polar axis. Normally, this is a non-linear relation. Excuse me, this is again my fault. It's a non-linear relation with, with uh, the field. And we have a phase transition, which is occurring at some temperature DC, which is called ferroelectric Curie temperature. And above the temperature, the material is in general paraelectric, means we have no spontaneous polarization in it. Contrast to um, ferromagnetism, <coughs> you have a proportionality between the polarization in the case of paraelectric materials with the electric field, but if E is zero, then we have no polarization. The famous example in these fields are baroskite structures. You know this is related with the work of Carl Alex Müller, the discovery of high temperature uh, superconductivity. I will not touch this problem, but I will tell you that it's only a part of a close collaboration before with Professor Müller in Switzerland. You have this typical materials now no. We have um, uh, normally, uh, we have no magnetism, no electric field, no uh, um, polarization, if, excuse me, if we have the normal uh, temperature, but if we uh, have a higher, a lower temperature, or if we have external pressure or uh, external temperature changes, then you have a, a spontaneous electric polarization, as you see. This is related with a shift of some atoms, and uh, this shift, of course, depends on the geometry. It means in <coughs> we have, in not in any case, uh, um, uh, electric uh, polarization if we have not a certain change of uh, symmetry in the crystal. But this is another problem. <coughs> I will not touch this problem. We know that ferroelectric substances are also uh, related with pyroelectric and piezoelectric. And you have a typical example of piezoelectric uh, influences. You have an external force and you have the creation of this. Uh, uh, voltage, and this is a very important point. I will only uh, briefly touch this program. Uh, I will concentrate now in the following on samples of baroskite, barium titanate, lead titanate, uh, and I should also point out that a very important group of substances is are the lead sarcanide titanate, which has piezoelectric properties. And the source is still an uh, introduction. I will uh, again uh, come to the group of substan substances. I only take, with, I will uh, care of ceramics, but this is a lot of monocular crystals who have ferroelectric properties. I will not explain in more detail, and also organic materials. And with respect to molecular crystals, we had also a very nice cooperation with a, with a famous scientist in Krasnoyarsk, uh, with Professor Alexandrov and with Professor Alexandrova, and Serkovich is very well experienced in this field. But I do not, I cannot touch this cooperation. We had also guests from Krasnoyarsk in Leipzig. Uh, why ferroelectrics? You know, uh, the ceramic cap capacitors have high permittivity values. It's, it's, they are highly precise mechanical actuators. And in particular, uh, ferroelectric uh, materials are also uh, applied in ferrem, it means ferroelectric random accessory memory. And we have in this non volatile and we have also volatile. I will come back to this question, and all in relation to these materials, like actuators, 
and ferroelectric materials which are uh, used in the computers and other techniques, the problem of the size of these materials is the main important problem. Uh, to uh, come to some uh, very uh, simple applications which have a high uh, practical value, I only would give two examples which I got from a presentation uh, 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 during a ferroelectric conference, I will mention this, in order to show you why we are interested to use uh, these uh, materials, these complicated techniques, uh, to find the limitation in the size. I already explained a piezoelectric effect. The piezoelectric effect to show the typical properties and the questions which arise in certain contexts is shown in this picture. Uh, you have a polar material, aluminum uh, nitride, and you see you have here a certain size of the material. In this size you have an uh, extension of 150 micrometers, and if you now look at the picture you see also the physical properties which is related to the action of this meter. You have a small plate, piezoelectric material, and you have um, attenuation of sound, like acoustic mirror. It means the sound can only propagate in this direction as known. And now you can also estimate the resonance frequency of device. And if you use, for instance, the length which is indicated and the the thickness it's two micrometers and this should be half a wave then you can simply calculate the resonance frequency of this device and this is if you have a sound <coughs> propagation two gigahertz and we, of course we use a normal sound speed which is known from the textbook it's about 400 <coughs> 4, meters per second it means this is already the reason to come to a smaller size of the materials because in this case you can increase still the frequency of the activation of this uh, device. This is the main problem why the people are interested to re reduce the size to find definite conditions for practical applications. Like, since this is a school, I look to go a little bit further. Uh, you see these uh, materials which I have just tried to introduce are used as ultrasonic transducers, switch actuators, valve actuators, droplet uh, ejectors. This is a very important point which I should mention. Linear actuators and so on. And as you see, this is a great group of application which is related to this type of material, but I would like to come back to the main topic. The main problem is to understand how we can reduce the size in order to go to higher frequency, or in case of, uh, of computers and other techniques, to find very small units. I will come <coughs> back to this problem. Now, this is the first uh, example which I have got uh, from this colleague in Switzerland. I will still mention this. And you see here uh, the inkjet printing heads with these with special materials. is a practical application. And you see, you have a very, very high uh, precision in the top formation. One microsecond, you have a very small top uh, let volume, and you can realize a very high speed of printing by these materials, and this is based on the action of these materials as actuators. This is a very important example why this research is still interesting. And uh, I will also, this is a picture which is impressive. This is a, such a type of a printing machine. You have a high number of printing heads like shown here. And uh, you have also a picture how many nozzles uh, you have in order to make <laughs> such a high speed. And by this machine, which is uh, available, of course, as an industrial scale printer, whether you have a speed of 150 min, um, meter per minute. And this is related with a very high frequency in which you can um, activate this material. And this very high frequency is definitely related to the small size. This is a problem. Uh, first problem with respect to the introduction. Another <coughs> short remark 
is the application of the spheroelectric materials as RAM. Normally, in a computer or in some device, you have a bit uh, connection and you have a word connection, and you have a spatial um, uh, transistor. This is normally a field effect transistor because this transistor may be switched by applying a voltage. It means you can open uh, by applying a certain voltage, several volt, and in order to store uh, certain information on this capacitor, or if you replace this capacitor by a, a ferroelectric material, then you have a non volatile system in which the information is not lost if you switch off the, 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 the voltage. It means this is a very simple principle which is realized in thousands of applications. Again here, you have the problem uh, if you apply the computer, printer and so on, that you um, have to find a small size of the materials in this capacitor, but also a size which is very effective, it means in which you have a high internal voltage in order to enable this uh, action of the materials. This is a normal application, of course, you have not only one bit, you have 64 bit and so on. This is a development, but the main problem is in this context to reduce the size of the materials in this capacitor mm -hmm. and of course in this sense to use this material for these certain problems. And now the problem of course is is the application in which you have to suppress <coughs> other currents and if, in, if you have to find a definite switching of the trans business, transport, uh, transistor. But in principle, the problem is how large should be the ferroelectric uh, parts of this construction in order to enable a modern uh, application. And it, since it was a long time before this idea, which was, uh, was um, uh, formulated in a master thesis already in 1952, has been tried to install into um, um, certain apparatus. Here is a, the name of NASA is mentioned. I am completely sure that it's this time also uh, in, the, in the Soviet Union this material was applied with respect to the space discovery and all this very modern application. But there, for me, there is no information. And therefore, I only see site neither. But I am sure that the applications in the Soviet Union were uh, at least as good as published in the United States. Perhaps you know better than myself, but I am sure that they had a very great progress with respect to the space research in the Soviet Union. And now the technical, it means the open application, is in the so-called Texas instrument process. They have 130 nanometers for the size of these materials, and in the, in the uh, Japanese, they have 180 nanometers. And this is the real problem which now occurs, because 180 nanometers is a huge size with respect to the material properties. And our question is how we can tell, how we can study precisely what is the limitation, limitation in, the, uh, in the size of these materials in order to have still ferroelectric switching which is related to the volume properties. And the problem is a real interesting problem. And this is the task in my lecture. It means we apply these techniques in order to solve this question. <coughs> we have, uh, and I will first give an example for our investigations with barium titanate and lead titanate. You have again these uh, typical uh, crystal structures. In the cubic phase, as I mentioned, you have no uh, no spontaneous mm -hmm. electric polarization because the polarization is related with the structure of this material. This is a very complicated thing, but it's a uh, property which you may also read in normal textbook. I need not to explain to you, but I should mention that it's a very important point to relate these properties with uh, structure change, structural changes and so on. And now I have an example which we have studied. I have here lead. Lidonate, as you see, and you see if you change 
as a unit so by a certain by in, by a certain by a certain process for instance by lowering the temperature you have no cubic but for instance tetragonal symmetries and you have uh, this replacement of these atoms you have a spontaneous polarization and it's very well known that this spontaneous polarization the square of this quantity is related with the so-called tetra Gonality factor, it means very simple, with a ratio of the constant c in this direction as indicated, and the constant, the latest constant in this direction, and this difference c over a minus 1 is proportional to the square of the spontaneous electric polarization. It's very simple to understand because you know that a, a polarization is always related with the distance of two electric. Uh, the charges. And this relationship is very important uh, for our applications by NMR. But, 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 but before I will mention this, uh, I should uh, tell you that the preparation of these fine particles is a very complicated task. I could only, we could only realize by a very uh, good cooperation with our chemist colleague because this is related with certain solid states reaction, this is related with milling, and of course the size characterization of this particle is very complicated. I will tell you we have here uh, depends on the size on the milling time starting <coughs> from a material which is approximately 30 nanometers large and and then I will show you that uh, we have already also measured the distribution of the particle size in these materials. We have not in any case, in, ev in each case, a very narrow <coughs> distribution, but we have some distribution. It means uh, with respect to physics, the information about the mean particle size like 50 nanometers, 25, 75, 155, is a not very a well defined quantity. It's even a well ill defined quantity because we have in some cases a very large distribution and we should be very careful to read the publications. There are many publications, but in, in many of the publications, this is not quite accurate to determine the size and then the information about the physical properties is a problem which is related also with some uncertainties. But in our case, we have these this materials, we have the selection, and with respect to NMR, and this is um, not very difficult to understand, we have the following situation. In case of barium, we have a spin 3 half. It means this spin 3 half nucleus tells us that we can use the nuclear quadro in direction and this uh, special, special coupling tensor uh, gives us the possibility to estimate uh, the so-called quadruple frequency which is NQ which is related to this electrical quadrupole momentum and also with, uh, with a field gradient. This is nicely written in this wonderful uh, book from Professor Chichik means these are fundamentals. And now we can uh, have the following information and this is well founded. Uh, we have in the high temperature paraelectric phase we have uh, this constant equal to zero because the electric field gradient is zero, is absent. In the ferroelectric phase, depending on the structure, this quantity will be uh, unlike zero. It's proportional uh, to the square of the polarization, which is related with the crystal symmetry. And it means, by means of EPR, you can directly investigate uh, the properties and you see the properties which are related to the ferroelectricity, it means to the existence of a spontaneous polarization, is shown here in, uh, in these measurements. You have a cubic phase, a, thing, a small line because mm -hmm. quadrupole broadening is absent. And then you have a tetragonal phase, you have a certain broadening, and I only show the so-called uh, central transition, it means a transition between plus half and minus half, and the other transitions, plus half, minus, uh, minus one, or plus half, 
plus one is not shown. It means I only concentrate on the central transition. Of course, the spectrum consists of several other lines which are not important in our context. Yes, this polycrystalline. <coughs> because we have no single crystals, we have okay. all these small systems. This is a polycrystalline material. We have a, we have a averaging of the, of the splitting, and this means we have a certain line shape of the central transition. And we have other lines which are not visible here. You can detect this, but this is a very complicated task. And this central lines is, of course, related with the spin uh, three half. And you see, we have typical changes. And now the important point for our investigation is the following. If you uh, study the behavior of the NMR spectra here, in the temperature where we have ferroelectric then you first observe a step light change. This is in the sense of the Landau theory, this is a phase transition of first order. And then you have an evolution of the line shape, it means this distance between the H similarities is a function of temperature, and by this way you can control the dep temperature depends of the ferroelectric polarization uh, 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 from the temperature. And you see we have a spatial temperature dependence which is seen from the spectra, and this temperature dependence gives us the possibility to directly, as seen here, the spontaneous polarization, and the spontaneous polarization, the square, is related to the order parameter in the sense of the <coughs> Landau theory. I cannot touch the famous Landau theory in this context, but you see, Landau theory is uh, based on the Helmholtz free energy density, and uh, this is defining the uh, order parameter. This was a great, it's a great discovery which, which led to his Nobel Prize, and we have a direct relation with uh, our NMR data, and this is the basis of our research. Now, coming back, this is the Landau theory of first order. You know, of course, mm -hmm. this theory, you know also that we have to define a so-called stability limit of the ferroelectric phase. This is a, a stability limit uh, which finally defines the Curie temperature, and we can uh, check this properties, it means the validity of the so-called mean field Landau theory by studying the temperature depends of our line shape. And this is a very important problem for us. As you see, we have ferroelectric behavior. Uh, it's not important to look at the, uh, at the quadrupole tensor, at the properties of the quadrupole tensor, but we have a jump-like behavior and then we have a temperature dependence and this is the typical properties of ferroelectricity. Here is a plot of this function and we see for this material the Landau theory is completely in agreement with our experimental data. And now I will tell you and come to some uh, nanoparticles. If you have these particles which I have characterized 15, 25, 75, 120, and also polycrystalline material, you see in general a superposition of two uh, parts to the line. First, the first part here is a line which is typical for the ferroelectric ordering. The second part is a, a symmetrical line and this is a part which shows us that the small, in the small particles you have not only a ordered, it means in the polycrystalline material, ordered phase, but also some surrounding and some disordered phase. It means our small particles are partially given by the ordered and the disordered part, which is related, of course, with the electric charges. And now... What about the wider line? Here. <coughs> here. Yes. 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 <coughs> you see we have here, we, this is the ordered part and we have a line which is uh, given here and again I, I show only the central transition. If you would like to discover the, the, first, uh, the first satellites, of course you should have a much broader region of, and we did not study this uh, because this is very insensitive, this related to the central transition. And we would like to have a very defined uh, condition because the very contained, uh, defined condition in this means that this line shapes or this is related with the property which are looking for, with our 
ordered thermoelectric phase. If you now, uh, you have uh, so-called ordered and disordered one, and if you now plot this temperature depends according to the Landau approach, you see the following. You have a step-like change here, first order, and all this material, this is polycrystalline, behave in a similar in a similar way. You have again this phase transition, this step-like change, and in all particles you have a, a part of the signal, a part of the material which behaves like a ferroelectric material. But we have also uh, checked the temperature depends according to the Landau ansatz. And you see if you reduce the size, you have a slight change of the typical experiment. It means you're coming from the mean field behavior, which is given by the phenomenological Landau exponent to a, to a icing type behavior. It means you see that also the behavior is depending on the number of atoms, and if you reduce the number of atoms, of course, the mean field theory breaks down, and you should have some uh, some icing type or, or ordering or some other ordering which is dependent on the number of particles. This is very clear. Also, with this respect, we are satisfied that the reduction of the size of our samples leads also to a modification, a small modification of the equation which is related to the theory of ferroelectricity. And now I would like you to speed up. You see we have uh, investigated these samples and uh, the problem was also to, 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 to look at this exponent. I should only mention that we have discussed this with the theoretical work of Professor Binder in Mainz and, we, and he explained the change of this exponent uh, 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 if he uh, suggests that we have no more uh, easing, uh, uh, excuse me, lambda behavior, but a typical uh, behavior like easing or Heisenberg model, depending on the symmetry of this material. It means this is formally in agreement. And now the most important is the following. We studied over a wide range of temperature, and I should mention in this work also um, uh, now a doctor, Dr. Setich from Petersburg participated, Pavel Setich who got the PhD in Leipzig. And you see we have a change which, uh, which shows you that we have a normal behavior at higher temperature and then we have a, a reduction of the spontaneous polarization. And it looks like that the electricity, ferroelectric disappears at a normal temperature and you see that we have this typical behavior. Of course, the scattering of these data points are so, so large that we cannot uh, predict any limitation. It means we have not a very clear uh, statement respect, with respect to a so-called phase fa um, size driven phase transition. And now we made another work, this is the work in my former group by Professor Petscher and others, when you used EPR spectroscopy. The formal is a the uh, information <coughs> is similar to NMR, but you have to introduce some paramagnetic sites like manganese or chromium or ferrum, and you have in this Hamiltonian a typical uh, parameter, the so-called D field or fine structure uh, parameter, and this parameter behaves as has been shown by Alex Müller about, uh, uh, about uh, three decades ago that this parameter is again proportional to the spontaneous electric magnetic uh, polarization. It means we can use, as you see, Carl Alex Miller 91, this quantity from the EBR uh, to characterize also the phase transition. This has been done, and I will only show that the analysis is quite complex. We had applied uh, lead titanate, and the, you see the log normal distribution to characterize the accuracy of the uh, quantities which I have mentioned here. And we are uh, quite uh, sure that we have found uh, the smallest size of seven nanometers. And this has been used uh, to study this EBR. Don't look at this picture. I only show you that the application of EPR spectroscopy in this case is a quite tricky situation. And I do not explain, I only mention that the colleagues, my colleagues, uh, applied EPR spectroscopy in the X-band 
in the Q-band, in the W-band, in order to select the different parts in the very complicated spectra which are typical for this ferroelectric uh, properties. It means this is a quite a tricky application. The, the people who are trained in case of EVR know what I am well, uh, what I am telling about, and you can believe me that this is a very serious work which has been done in this context. This has been published uh, by a PhD student from Please Turkey. Please remind us uh, which uh, frequencies for these bands. Yes, we have, you see, we have the field here. We have the, the, the distribution of, of the lines in terms oh, of yeah. Miller Tesla. Here we have 94 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. Here we have 35 gigahertz. And here we have the normal expand. It means 9.4 gigahertz. And we had to use, because you see the typical, <coughs> the typical changes in the, in the spectra in order to derive the so-called parameter. It means the fine structure parameter. This is a great methodical work uh, in the essential point, say we are able to find the following. In this case of small lead titanate, they have seen that we have a splitting of the lines, but this line uh, is, uh, the splitting is temperature dependent and a certain, at a certain temperature we have uh, 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 this single lines, and this means, in this case, we have a phase transition which is suppressed at higher temperatures, and here it depends on the size of the particle. And uh, this is uh, the explanation of this so-called D-field parameter. It means uh, our uh, phenomenon, it means we have a suppression of the phase transition at a certain temperature below a certain size is related with the fact that we have a shift of the titanium ion from the center of this a cubic structure. It means we have a, in this temperature range um, uh, uh, tetragonal distortion, but these details we are well known from the literature and it is an application of the known information. To come back to the school, I would only uh, tell you, you, believe me please, that it's possible that we can study the different uh, sized uh, materials by mean of a per spectroscopy, that we have a clear spectral parameter which tells us the information of the spontaneous electric polarization, and we can plot this parameter and compare this parameter with other works. And you now see that the result is much better than I have shown in the lecture, in the presentation before. You see that our spontaneous, uh, that our phase transition temperature and our spontaneous polarization, this is here shown, the D parameter, the tetragonality parameter, and other quantities are clearly dependent on the, uh, on, the, on the temperature and also on the size of these particles. And you see the size of the particle is in the range of about 5 to 6 nanometers. This has been uh, checked by the so-called Ishikawa fit, a quite imperial fit in order to determine a critical size. And in this system, we can show that the smallest par a a particle have a mean diameter of approximately six, five, six nanometer. It's a limitation. Too small. Yes, too small. And uh, below this, uh, but this depends on the symmetry also. Below this, to this quantity, we have no more ferroelectricity. It means we can reduce, in principle, the size of our material, if it's possible, by technical reasons, to less than 10 nanometer. And now I'm coming back to the main problem, um, this um, uh, data storage now. This year, so we have a clear physical indication that below approximately 6, 5 nanometer, the po volume properties completely disappears, and above you have still the possibility <coughs> to switch <coughs> these small units. It means you can uh, make the technical application. Now I will a little bit go further. It means we have also checked, and it is, I will only make like a short note 
Uh, we have checked this by introducing the material in the so-called MCM uh, zeolite or mesoporous materials. And you see, uh, this is a material which has been uh, made for uh, technical uh, applications for the catalysis. And the, a the aim of this study is to show, can we stabilize the properties uh, in if we introduce the material in this hexagonal structure, which is well known. We have pores between 2 and 3.7 nanometers, and, five, and you can abet the material. And we have also checked by uh, 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 low temperature nitrogen adsorption measurement that we have a poor filling. You see the difference here between this, this is empty, and this, this is empty, and this is with biom We have a certain, a certain uh, Profiling, and we can estimate that our uh, size of the parium titanate particle should be around 3.4 nanometers and so on. And we have checked together with the people in, um, in Vilnius, this was uh, uh, very interesting work. In this case, we found no spontaneous part of uh, depolarization, and this is quite well fitting our first <coughs> estimation. We gave a, a limit of about six, and now we check we have smaller particles. This is a very nice result, and I can only tell you, but I will not continue uh, in this context to much details. We have a nice collaboration with Professor Leonard Charnayer from St. Petersburg University, and we have also checked the size in size effects in case of sodium nitrite, which is a well-known substance showing thermoelectricity, and so on. But allow me to not to touch this question, because my time is limited, and mm -hmm. to come uh, to a, co a more general conclusion, which is probably interesting for you. I will now switch this. We have a lot of work in this case but it's the time is too short and there is no news. But I will tell you the main important part. We have found a size-driven phase transition using NMR and EPR data. <coughs> the use of NMR and EPR, I repeat, is necessary because all the other techniques are not able to characterize the small particles if you would characterize by uh, X-ray scattering, you should have at least a translational symmetry. It's well known for the specialist. I only will mention X-ray scattering can not essentially contribute, but only this local techniques like NMR or EPR. This is the first statement. Uh, we have uh, found that the limitations are given by very small dimension, and this range is still large which is applied in the practical application. It means it's a problem is also to stabilize or to influence the properties of this thermoelectricity or magnetic materials by a so-called matrix effect. <coughs> it means you can stabilize uh, by a certain arrangement of the particle, but this is another topic, which is not in the line I would like to convince you. It means, please, we have found a certain limitation. But now we are looking, and this is the end of my presentation, to the practical situation. If you consider the size of the magnetic storage material, which is nowadays applied in some computers, then you find a very interesting statement. In order to store one byte, it means eight, eight bits, you have in average 10 to 5 atoms. 10 to 5 atoms, this is a size which is by a factor of 10 to 20 larger than the size we have found as a physical limitation. Yes? And the reason is, of course, if you have a higher number of particles, the interaction with these particles uh, uh, stabilizes the storing process in the sense that you have to have a minimum number of particles since this volume uh, properties is not suppressed. And this is the first statement. And in the case of ferroelectric ramps, the situation is still worse because in the ferroelectricity, this is related with the spatial spin properties. You have still to have a larger uh, system of classical dipoles yes, in order to stabilize. And this is now the question, how to proceed? It means it's possible to still work to 
reduce the size. Yes, we have tried to take this, but this is a now a technical process. And the other problem is to look, are there other <coughs> physical properties? And I found in information, this is not our work, this is a information from the Hamburg Center for Free Electron Laser Science. And they found that if we use the property of anti ferroelectric or anti ferromagnetic materials, where you have all of the layers of uh, polarized and inversely polarized media, you can, uh, and this is a hope, uh, stabilize the system. But okay. this work, yes, I should finish it. Yes, thank you. One minute still. And they found that at 5 Kelvin, they can at least use 12 atoms in order to uh, store one bit. It's 5 Kelvin. But you see, this is a very low temperature, and it's practically not possible to apply this very low temperature for practical persons. This is the one limitation. It means we have a certain physical limitation to reduce still the size. Another approach which I have found, and this is really the end, is the following. I wrote in German, I will briefly uh, 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 translate. Uh, the statement in this German text is the. Uh, this? <laughs> Translate in Russian. Yes. And then, Daki, Ucciani e Dumayet, Sto Edoni e Mietz Missel, Umenshi Chisel Adomov. It means, Ani Dumayet, Dakoi, Technicheski, Technicheski, Prasi, Atak Sloshno, Sto Anani Stoyet. Do do uli chit da ki materiali do stopi ani bole chili bole 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 And therefore, they are now looking, and this is the end of my lecture, uh, to use simple atoms. And in fact, there is an information from the literature. I will only show you this is a huge research project which is uh, executed in the. Technical University of Karlsruhe, <coughs> together with people in Chapin, uh, Stuttgart, Halle, and also in Dresden, it means in the, in the University of Leipzig, and they <coughs> tried to make um, simple atoms as quantum dots. And of course, this could be a solution. They used Holman uh, atoms, 100% large magnetic momenta, better magnetic properties even in comparison to iron. But you see the problem is, is this a really way? Because this experiment which have been proposed now uh, are related to very low temperature. It means if this is a, my convincement, Yatumayu, Sto Edo Vashnov Budoshe is katakir quantavia effecti stop me nashli luce usloya tatakir magnetic Kashitsa e ferroelectric materiali. No, this is the end of my lecture. I try, <coughs> I hope that I could convince you that magnetic resonance is a very powerful tool to study these small particles. And this is the information, that the information we have received is valuable for uh, some fundamental technique. Uh, development in which direction we should look to improve the systems to come to a further miniaturization. And you have also seen, and I hope I could convince you, that we have uh, a limited possibility still to reduce the size of our body. Although in the practical uh, applications, the number of atoms is still far beyond the limits which re in reality exist if we consider the physics. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> Thank you very much for your excellent lecture. And uh, I'd like to suggest uh, to ask Professor Michel in Russian and both in yes. Russian and English. So uh, feel your free. Uh, switch on. <laughs> Please, uh, I, I think uh, we have time for one, two questions. Пожалуйста, вопрос. Извините, что я говорю по-английски. Да, пожалуйста. Да, профессор Михаил достаточно хорошо говорит. Did you observe any relation between uh, the shape of nanoparticles and their uh, electrical properties? Yes. 
Clearly, yes. But this is another topic I did not mention. This. It depends. If you can control the shape in these small <laughs> particles only if you have a definite surrounding. And in this sense, we have used mesoporous material, also opals, in which you have a definite structure between the particles. And the opals normally are well defined. You can make the diameter of the small particles, and then you have well defined spaces or voids between mm -hmm. the particles. It clearly, it should, because these are the boundary conditions. You know from the fundamental course of physics, if you have a layer, the, uh, the electric behavior is quite different from, from a volume phase. This is well known. This is, in principle, classical physics. But uh, of course, we have material, mat magnetic materials, and in this, I have to add, you have also to think which materials, which, uh, which paramagnetic ions you introduce in these systems, because the coupling between the spins and the lattice properties are well uh, dependent on the on the introduction of the certain uh, certain paramagnetic uh, sciences. But you are right. Thank you. Thank you. Now, how is controlled the extent of absorption properties? You show some yes, absorption yes, properties? Yes, yes. This is, we have in Leipzig, uh, in the chemical department, we yes. have a great experience with respect to catalysis. And they have volume, volume apparatus, and also some uh, gravimetric in, in mm -hmm. order to control the adsorption properties. It means it's at the mostly on the nitrogen temperature. <coughs> And this is as well known. Of course, it's a little bit tricky. And in most, in many publications, there are fundamental mistakes. If you have these small, these small voids, and you know the Landau, it's a, it's a Brunauer Emmett Teller theory. This, this theory is based on the assumption that you have well ordered planes, and the first plane on the surface is different from the second and the third plane. And normally, they use this very simple formula and give a values like a surface area in squared meter per gram. I don't believe that this theory is well applied because this is a great experience and we had a very good correlation with Moscow people, with, with Professor Kieseljov in the chemical department, and also with to Professor Dubini, and they know very well that we have to be very careful. But for a general information, these techniques are still fine because you see the differences in the adsorption isotherm. How to interpret this? This is a quite different question. You have to be extremely careful. But say, this is an excellent Russian school in Moscow and in also in Petersburg in the Institute of Academy of Silicate Research. Professor Stanov was our good friend in this field. Yes. Any more questions? Sure, Small note, uh, you mentioned <coughs> Professor Alexandrov in connection with yes. ferroelectricity. Yes, yes. Uh, I have some relation with uh, this relative. He, he is my relative. Ah. He is my uncle. Ah. <laughs> now, excuse me, I did not know this. This is an extremely great pleasure for me because we highly estimated the work in Krasnoyarsk. And of course, this work, which we had with the dear people in Krasnoy was related to the problem conductivity. <coughs> it means we had this, this ferroelectric materials, and in this materials we have press transition, which are related to the proton order, order ordering to the hydrogen bond system. This was the work which we have done with the people in, in Krasnoyarsk. But nevertheless, it's a wonderful institute with a very rich experience in this field. And I should tell you, we learned a lot of this from this group. Yes. Oh, yes, this is a great pleasure for me. An expert. Next. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>